Hello guys and welcome back to some epic chef. I am the Indian Ninja. Did that kind of backwards and uh, <laughs> last episode, last episode we beat um, our first big cook off and won the restaurant. So we're going to be going checking out that restaurant soon. Uh, but before I do, as you, as I said, I would off camera. I filled up all my storages, at least almost all of them. Um, the cow meat and milk aren't quite full. In fact, the cow meat, I don't think there's any more left over there. Uh, but, you know, did all the rest and we are maxed out on the levels. So I made two of these ground beef. One for the chest, just so we can help with the synergies. And then this one here. So I'm, I'm going to make this meal to, uh, to level me up. I took a look. So I'm going to start off with seaweed. Which synergies with the ground beef gives you an extra 15 vigor. And then you get another nine because it synergies with the apple. Um, and this sauce is one of the ones we unlocked. And it increases the value of vigor by two for five seconds. So I'm thinking that. Dump that in, but before it even before it synergies, quickly add that. Hopefully that'll work. So let's do that. Right, let me add that in quickly. Oh, okay. I missed out on the 15%. Next time we do this, I need to remember um, to do it the other way around. But that's still a lot of vigor. I mean, we get max on the others, but they're not as high. The vigor is going to be our biggest leveling up aspect in this one. I and mean, we get five times 51 there. So that's not 250 plus change. So level seven. Straight up to level nine. Evil Mangora. Ghost Tato. Wow. Three levels we went there. Evil Mangora and Ghost Tato. Let's have a look at those new synergies. Oh wait, I don't have one of them in here. Okay. Ah, oh. That's different, okay. Well that can now synergy on its own. For a greater amount of that, but I don't think I have anything that synergies yet. Oh, maybe I do. Let me go grab a Mangora. No. Although. Well, if I'd known that, could have done crab. But it wouldn't have synergy with that. Or oh, crab, uh, crab and seaweed, that's a bad combo. But anyway, uh, new synergies. Right, to the restaurant. Okay, here we are. Let's see what's in store. We have a toilet to change our clothes. Menu. I can eat here. Okay. I can cook at the restaurant. Well, obviously, but I mean, I cook myself a meal. It makes sense if we're hanging around here. But why would we if the ingredients are all at base? I don't know. So I'm guessing this is where, like, all the seating area goes. Let's take a look. That's a nice view. Oh, you can see into the office from here. And there's Mitriel. Hello, Mitriel. Revolution. No idea what that is. Can we interact with this chest? No. Nope. 
get down to business. I see you finally decided to bless your business with your presence. Well, this place is bigger than I expected. The building is pretty, it's partly excavated within the rock. The restaurant has potential, but it needs a serious investment. I've provided you with some basics, but that's pretty much it. I'm not going to get into debt to finance your business. Hey, I appreciate it. What do we need to get it, get it up and running? Well, to begin with, we should find a better name for the place. The Bicornio carries a lot of bad luggage. We need to go for a fresh start. Do you have any suggestions? A restaurant name should be powerful. A declaration of intent. Like the Transcendent, uh, Transcendence. The best restaurant in the city, run by the Festermans of siblings. They cook using magic that takes food beyond. They make every meal at their place an unforgettable experience. Or the Immaculate, run by the Nerian custodian Anzashi. She takes pride in the untainted perfection of her millennia old traditions. I see, a name that defines what we're doing here. Exactly, descriptive, brief and powerful. I think I got it. How about we name it Z Zesteront? <laughs> How about we stick wood splinters under our fingernails? Hey, it's descriptive because, well, you know, it's a restaurant and I'm Zest. By that logic, we could call this place the Idiot's Den. Hey, you don't need to be that hard on yourself. <laughs> New item, kitchen. Client's table. Is that it? Let's forget about the name for now. We need to put it, put the basics in place. Here, have a few plans. You need to build at least two customer tables and add one dish to the menu near the entrance by interacting and dragging a cooked dish from your inventory. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Ah, here we go. So we need four wood planks, seven wood planks. Thankfully we have a decent stop of seven. Eight, nine, ten. Minimum of ten wood planks. That's dirty logs. Alright, let's get down to business. Okay, well, I went ahead and I chopped down a bunch of trees. I didn't use any of my uh, reserve stock. So we just spent all our level, so I may as well get some more. I did take a quick dip in the little bathing pool thing I got going on. Um, and we have ourselves enough now to make the kitchen area, which I thought we already had actually, come to think of it. And four tables. Oh, I need a dish. What am I going to cook? Uh, maybe I'll just cook the same thing as I did before. Um, and give us like a baseline. So I'll get those ingredients ready and I'll be back in just a moment. Okay, all of that is done. Let's go in. Now the dish I made was the same as the last one. I just didn't do a sauce. I didn't have enough seaweed to do it. You need like five as part of the recipe for the sauce. I don't know if aroma factors into this or not. But I'm just going to put this in here, like that. This is what they said to do. So hopefully that'll be alright. Now. Is it just down there? Or is up here allowed to... Ooh, not this area, but this one is fine. So maybe... Is that... Have like VIP area seating up here, and I know it's like right by the cook, but that's why it's VIP because you know, little travel time for your food, which means it's not going to get cold, and you're on a terrace away from the worst or most of the other customers. I don't know if that actually counts because they're not getting the squares down here. Or maybe I am, they're just under the flooring. Right, I'm going to maximise all my space as much as possible here for the moment. Maybe that will change later, I don't know. I don't know what else goes in here. I think we've got the basics covered very well. Now we need to focus on 
Is someone at the door? Who is that? Is he with the Mafia? I thought Turapia said they'd leave us alone. How should I know? Maybe you can ask him. Me? It's your damn restaurant. You go. Ugh. Hello, uh, sir. Are you here to eat? You're the one who defeated Turapio Zest? Zest? Yes. I sort of am. I see, I see. Uh, so, can I help you, or... Uh... Yes, I mean, no, it's you who needs my help. I do? Yes, because you're venturing into a dangerous world, friend. A world of tyrants and... Bastards? You can say that pretty much... Say that to pretty much anyone on the street, and they would all agree. Especially the tyrants. <laughs> ah, correct. But you own a restaurant in Ambrosia. You are going to have a hard time in this world, Zest, unless you cling to the truth. Ugh, is this a religious thing? Religious? Ha! <laughs> you misunderstand me. I'm not a friend of pulpits and of any kind. I'm not here with any metaphysical truth. I'm here with the mundane, everyday truth. And that truth resides with the ordinary people. I don't quite follow. It's easy. You have a restaurant, and naturally you want your restaurant to improve. Of course. And do you know and what to improve? How do you identify your strengths and weaknesses? Guess I'll listen to the Critic Union. No, the Critic Union won't help you. They do not understand the popular truth. If you put your faith in good old Valzoi, things will change for the better. Uh, I guess the sensible path is to ignore the opinion of accredited professionals and just listen to a complete, probably drunk stranger who speaks in, weird, in a weird, confusing way. That's exactly the idea. But you won't listen to one. No, you'll listen to them all. Ah, trust me. I can make sure you are one with the people. And it won't cost you a single SQ though. Want to know more? Well, uh, I... <laughs> Helpful. Thank you, Mitriel. Sure. Good, good. Come to my office next door when you have some customers. We'll make a good business and fight the good fight. Ugh, looking forward to it. Well, that was strange. So we're partners with a Vogradian weirdo now. Dunno. It's not like we're in a position to reject anyone's help. Maybe. But it won't do us much good if we don't have customers. So what do we do? I think we should be proactive. Get out there and, I don't know, see if you can help around the district. Meet the neighbours. Try to get on their good side. You might decide. They might decide to return the favour and visit us. Am I supposed to go around doing errands for people? So people feel compelled to come and eat out here out of pity? Quid pro quo. That's Concordia for you. Yeah, well, Shona didn't go for that one for the coat of arms. Get moving. I'll stay here and handle the kitchen. I'll make sure the customers are served. Now go. Okay. Okay. Right. Uh, it's a little bit of time before the end of the episode. Uh, get to know the neighbours. Oh, I'm not seeing any uh, mission points. Well, we know we've spoken to this guy. So maybe this will help. We've done him a favour. We helped him start up his business. No, we haven't. No, we haven't found... Oh, he gives you a hint. Talk to Private Spec. Mate, of course, Spec will be... Wow, we've got... Oh, my God. Okay, uh, we have side quests. Let's go with Spec. Spec's always been good to us. Oh, Specky boy. Hey, Zest, I heard your restaurant is open for business. Yes, it is. I hope to see you there. Yeah, well, I really can't leave my post. You're the only one guarding this door? Of course not. Besides corporeal dummy Dominic? 
Yes. That's a bit too much that's a bit too much pressure for one person. I know, but the old port district doesn't have much power in terms of law enforcement. We have to make do. And this particular gate isn't very important when it comes to security. No one ever comes from there. Why? Because there's a horribly haunted villa. I told you it was a bird. And nothing else? Well, yes, there is something else. But the only danger he poses are his long ramblings. It doesn't change the fact that we don't need a third guard in here. I was going to say second. <laughs> the villa is starting to become civilised. And I supply food to the restaurant now. Things are changing. I see. Maybe you could talk to my superior and then convince him to increase funding for this door. Captain Bonifacus? I don't think he likes me much. Oh, not him. He wouldn't listen to you at all. I mean, Lieutenant... Valpirius. Valpirius? He's trying hard to keep things civil, but it doesn't get my support. I'll see what he has to say. Good luck. Where are we going? This way? <laughs> Lieutenant Valpirius, what is it? Citizen. Ah, you're the one who lives in the villa, Zest, isn't it? Yes, I wanted to talk to you about the access tunnel. Maybe it needs a bit more personnel. I see. We have Private Speck assigned to that spot, and he's peculiar but diligent. And he's also overworked. The man needs some weight taken off his, off his back, so he can take a walk from time to time, instead of spending the whole day there, alone. He started to, to do a few weird things. I think I know what you mean. But I simply don't have the manpower. It's either that, or leave the gate unguarded. We could also keep it closed every other day, but I suspect you wouldn't like that. Well, wouldn't be very convenient for me. It's not like I want a guy to go nuts. Hmm. You seem to mean well. And I can't argue that Speck is overworked. Tell you what. Deep into the forest. That's where I looked, wasn't it? When I was like, oh, I was like, oh my god, what's that? You might find a rare sight. A wild Irwin tree. How would that help? They are very difficult to cultivate and are much more appreciated by the locals. If you manage to make them grow successfully in your farm, it will gain importance. There are not many Erwin farms in Concordia. I see. Any idea of where in the forest I should look? I seem to recall it... Uh, recall... I think, that's, I think that's a typo. I seem to recall it is in Orkish territory. You'll have to search the northern part of the woods. Got it. Get some seeds from the tree and try them out in your villa. If they take root, it's good news for everyone. See what I can do. If the tree bears fruit, show them to me. Alright, let's have a... Uh, what's the time? I can make some cuts. Let's have a quick look in this place. Okay, can't spawn in my uh, my little mount in this place. They said north, right? So let's just keep going north. Okay, I'll, I'll talk to them next time. I haven't got time in this episode. Speaking of, time is going awfully quick in this place. Eight, 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 nine. Okay, so this place must advance time, oh my god, rapidly. Ten, yeah. Oh. Point taken, I'm not going to fall around in here in the dark and be jumped by temperous knows what. Alright then, well I guess that's going to be for next episode. I did say that we're going to have to be doing some side quests soon anyway and we've been given a huge amount of them. Uh, so for the next, I don't know how many episodes, we're just going to clear our side quests off, the, off our plate. Get them done. Um, but I think for now... It's a good place to stop. So I want to thank you all very much for watching.
please don't forget to rate and comment below. We're, we're going to start making some uh, good cash, I suppose, hopefully, with that restaurant. Um, thank, you for, thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to rate and comment below, and I will see you next time. I am the Indian Ninja, and I'm out.